Hello and welcome to Freedom Reads Anti-Bias Book Talk, the new video series from Teaching for Change. We talk about children's books using an anti-bias, anti-racist lens as a strategy to learn ways to talk about issues of race and the world with the children in our lives. Today's book is Missing Daddy, written by Miriam Kaba, illustrated by Bria Royal. I am your host, Allison Kreiner Brown, and I use she, her pronouns. This series comes from two immediate needs that we're seeing among parents, caregivers, and educators, asking themselves, how do I talk to kids about race and racism? And how do I further my own learning to be anti-biased and anti-racist? Each episode includes a synopsis of the story and then focuses on four to five key points through an anti-bias lens. Watch our introductory video to learn more about this series and Teaching for Change. Go to the video description for a link to our resource page for this book and to our book list on socialjusticebooks.org. And go to teachingforchange.org to show your appreciation and make a donation to grow and sustain this work. Before we dive in, there are three announcements for today. Number one, the key resource that you should read and refer to for this series is called A Guide for Selecting Anti-Biased Children's Books, available on socialjusticebooks.org and through the link below. Number two, Missing Daddy is one of the elementary age titles on our incarceration book list at socialjusticebooks.org. Find a review of this book and other links at the resource page for this video. Number three, in this episode, I specifically refer to two of the goals of anti-bias education. There are four goals in anti-bias education, and you can find links to read more about them on the resource page for this video. The subject of today's talk is Missing Daddy, published in 2018. This is recommended for children in elementary school, though it could be adapted for early childhood. This book was written by Mariam Kaba, an anti-criminalization and anti-violence educator and organizer. In the author's note, she writes, many children cannot articulate their feelings of longing for their incarcerated parent, and so they keep their anger, sadness, and fear bottled up. This book is my attempt to amplify the voices of children with incarcerated loved ones. The illustrator is Bria Royal, a multidisciplinary artist from Chicago. Here's a synopsis from our friends at Rethinking Schools. In Missing Daddy, the young narrator's father went to prison when she was just three. Sometimes her classmates can be cruel, but she is surrounded by a loving family and an understanding teacher and counselor. This poignant book will help not only young children who find themselves in this circumstance, but will also sensitize classmates and educators themselves. Missing Daddy is a warm and necessary book. Here are five key points to pull out about this book from an anti-bias lens. Number one, Missing Daddy is a title that checks multiple boxes in the anti-bias early childhood framework, including the first goal, that children will develop positive personal and social identities, to paraphrase. This book gives rare and refreshing visibility to kids who are hardly ever portrayed in books and media, children of incarcerated parents. Yet the author's note cites that more than 2.7 million children under the age of 18 have an incarcerated parent and more than 5 million children have experienced the incarceration of a parent at some point in their lives. This book also challenges colorism by featuring characters with dark skin and celebrating the good about them, despite the circumstances. To be dark skinned in a society that favors light skin and to have a parent that is incarcerated. We must be intentional to show our children that they are beautiful and worthy of love and teach their peers that they are as well. Number two. The second goal of anti-bias education, paraphrased, is that children will express joy and comfort with human diversity and be comfortable and empathetic interacting with people from diverse backgrounds. Many children do not have incarcerated family members, nor may they know kids who do. This makes it even more important that they are exposed to real experiences that are not like their own 
and that parents and educators guide them through finding the connections that they can make to their lives with people whose lives are seemingly very different from their own. Missing Daddy has a fantastic discussion guide at the end of the book to help facilitate these conversations. In the United States, prisoners are made to be invisible. It is hard to be comfortable with people you don't know exist and easy to demonize them when you do hear about them. Number three, the characters in Missing Daddy have a family structure that is not typically portrayed, especially in children's media. Family structure is one of the social identities that is important for students, educators, parents, and caregivers to pay attention to in anti-bias education. What do families usually look like in children's books, TV shows, school materials? The child in Missing Daddy lives with her mother and her grandmother. Having a dad in prison is part of their family structure. Through her father, there's also an older sister who lives with a different mother in a different city. These kinds of family structures are seldom represented in children's books and media. Number four. Similarly, there are multiple indicators that this is a working class family. The child and her grandmother take the bus to and from school and to visit daddy, a trip that takes them all day. Mama, quote, works all day and night. They also live in an apartment. Children and families that live in houses are overrepresented in children's books, while millions of children live in apartments, multi-unit buildings, and other kinds of dwellings. Number five, last, Missing Daddy beautifully shows what kind of impact a system that disproportionately incarcerates black and poor parents can have on their children and the family as a whole. We see a father and child walking hand in hand on the first page. And on the next page, we learn that daddy's been gone since she was three. Classmates tease that daddy won't be home for years. Mama and grandma are carrying extra loads. Talking to the school counselor can be uncomfortable. And visiting daddy is long periods in between time. And he is far, far away. The child is battling large emotions, and this book honors the humanity in each of the characters. One particular lesson we adults can take from this book is that the child finds solace in a teacher who is not judgmental and who frames her experience as being one of, quote, all kinds of families. That brings us back to anti-bias goal number one and number two. Again, the story is Missing Daddy, written by Miriam Kaba, illustrated by Bria Royal. Find a link to resources for this book in the video description below. Visit us online for book lists and more at socialjusticebooks.org and make a donation to sustain and grow this work at teachingforchange.org. Hope to see you next time for the next episode of Freedom Reads Anti-Bias Book Talk. Until then, please follow, subscribe, donate, and share. Peace, love, and justice.